right out of the box and no modification whatsoever 34.8 miles an hour wow and cruise control look at there it stayed at 34.0 i have let go of the remote and it's stuck brake shuts it right off Straight out of the box, the Rattan Quercus, 34.8 miles per hour. <laughs> that is the fastest cargo bike I think I've ever seen. And I didn't even have to do anything to it. It came shipped this way. And watch this here. Cruise control. Yes, it stays there. I'll admit I carried it out. I got to 32.1 with the, my weight on there of 180 pounds. Get that cruise control off. Oop. Hit the brake. That's the Rattan Quercus, 34.8 miles per hour, just straight out of the box. Man, this thing will absolutely fly. Fastest cargo e-bike I have tested. And only $18.99 while it's on sale. Incredible. Now, I'll admit, guys, there are some bikes out there that will do 30-something miles per hour. But for $18.99, no. I've not seen any. You've got the Aerial Rider that'll get 30 something miles an hour. You've got the Rev Up One. You've got the Super 73 that'll all do 30 something miles per hour. But for $18.99, no, no. This, and, and on top of that, it's a cargo e-bike that'll hold 450 pounds. Look at the massive size of that cargo rack. And that is solid too. That's not one of those little metal with the little metal legs on it that most of the time come bent in shipping. No, that is one solid piece of metal. Yep. So this is a great bike. I was excited to get it. And I'm going to jump in here and tell you all about it real quick. I'm going to go over the specs and everything with you right now. And then we're going to jump on this thing, head out in the next review and climb some mountains, climb some trails and actually see what this thing can do. I know for a fact it will go 32.8 miles an hour with 185 pounds on it. I've already done that going down the street. I already know 20% grades are nothing for this thing. So it's a powerful e-bike and it's a 750 watt rear hub motor. It feels more like a thousand watts pushing like 12 or 1400 watts to be honest about it. It just keeps pulling and pulling. So here you go. Let's get into this bike, man. Back here, you have a 750 watt rear hub motor with a 1200 watt peak output. It actually feels more like a thousand watt motor. Uh, I've ridden some and this does actually put out really good, real strong motor. It's not branded. I don't see any brand name on it, so I'm not real sure who makes it. I don't know if it's in-house or what, but it's a really good motor. And it's housed inside this beautiful magnesium rim. I love these rims on this bike. They look really good. Some people prefer spoke rims, some people, um, prefer these kind and I, I like these I like these molded rims uh, they look really good on the bike uh, there's that one I mean they look really nice uh, good job on that um, they're balanced pretty good going down the road I didn't see much balance but you can't correct that easy with balancing beads or you can put about a half a bag of flat out in each tire which I do anyway that fluid moves around and it actually acts like balancing beads so it really helps out a lot there's Dudley over there hello Dudley he's about 14 years old he's still a good boy down thank you You've got a 180 millimeter rotor, which looks like every other 180 millimeter rotor on e-bikes. Yep. Right here, you've got the hydraulic front and rear brake branded Fast Ace. I've never heard of that brand, but they stop really good. Uh, I've had no problem with them. They're actually a lot quieter than the Tektros and stuff that I've used. They stop just as good, so I'm sure they're just as good. Here you've got the cargo rack. This is not one of those flimsy metal ones with the aluminum legs that boat down and get bent all the time. No, this is metal, all welded too, right here. Attached right here, this is all welded. And then attach it down here. You can actually take this off if you wanted to and do something different. Or if you wanted to take it off and just have no rear cargo, just a bike, it would look pretty cool. Anyway, on top here, this is a piece of plywood. I'm not a fan of these. It does look real pretty on the bike. I ain't gonna say it don't, but I'm not a fan of them because, um, see that swing set? It's got the wood with the little clear coat on it. The sun stripped that clear coat off, 
the wood's kind of warped. We have to clear coat that every year just about. So I'm not a fan of the wood. It does look really nice on this and it may hold up, it may not, but it doesn't really matter because if you can see up underneath here, they've got these welded in crossbars all the way down it. So they've actually got it boxed in and you could put, they'll put a bag, a painter or anything else on top and latch it down. So whether this lasts or not, does not matter. You can, uh, there's a hundred other things you can do even if you take that off because you still, it's got the braces across the back. So not worried about that. While we're back here, you've got the 20 by four inch fat tires, branded Kenda and their industrial sport. You've got plastic back fender, plastic front fender, strolling on forward. It looks like this thing was made for a mid drive motor. Nice big housing right there. This is a torque sensor bike. This is not a cadence, it is a torque sensor. Um, I'm gonna show you something real quick. What I do like about this is a lot of bikes, like I have the Event Adventure 2, my wires come out the bottom, they come down it, and so we put skid plates on them. This here, I guess they thought about that because this here, if I can get this camera up under here, you can see it doesn't have anything come out the bottom of it. They actually came out the side, the back, this back of it right here, and then went down the bike. I do like the way these connect together. I don't like the ones that just plug because they get pulled out sometimes. So I like the way these screw in together, uh, better hold there. It did come with two kickstands. You've got this side kickstand if you want to go to the side. It's got the moped style kickstand. I'm going to show you something real quick with this one. So when it's up like this right here, you can see how close it is to that chain. So you're going to hear that all the time. I heard it while I was riding. These actually bounce all the time as you're riding or going over bumps and stuff. So it's constantly hitting this all the time. I mean, it's really cool that they sent it because working on the bike with this on there is great. And so I can actually take this off, keep it and use it when I want to do something to the back tire or something, if I got to take it off or whatever. Um, so I'm glad it's there, honestly. It just, it's just for this right here, I won't use it on the bike when I'm riding. I'll just use it like if I'm working for it. I'm not complaining about that. Thank you for sending me an extra one. Not many brands give you the choice. Also, this cable, this is your derailleur cable. Um, uh, excellent engineering on this. What it is, it comes down the front. It does come inside this tube. It goes behind that battery. It goes behind all this inside your controller box. It comes out and actually goes inside your arm right here. And it comes out the back right here. It loops around down to your derailleur. That is great. That is a great design there. The only problem I have with this, and, and you can change it yourself, so it's not like a, a flaw or something like that. Um, but this cable comes out and it's real close to this. If I can get this in here, you can see it's probably maybe an eighth of an inch to maybe a quarter inch from that cable, the chain is. So any kind of flapping, it's gonna hit that cable, probably wear the side of it out or end up wearing it out right there. Probably what I'll do is I'll come out Instead of coming on top of this, I'll probably come out right here and loop around back down and then put a zip tie on it. Cause even if you put a zip tie right here or anything, this chain, if it moves at all, it's going to hit it. Especially if you're in like the seventh and eighth gear. Um, if you're up in higher gears, it doesn't matter. But if you're down in the seventh and eighth gear, um, it's going to um, probably hit that cable and eventually wear a spot on it. But it's an easy fix. It's not a, it's not a huge problem. While we are on this side, you'll see they have these Shimano eight gears and you can see they did not go with the shimano derailleur they went with a sunrace derailleur i haven't never had one of these i've seen some reviews on it and from mountainbiking.com and stuff and they said that uh, they had used these and they held up really good it is a lot beefier than the shimano so um all these uh, arms and stuff are a lot thicker uh, and so it may hold up a lot better. I'm not real sure. We'll just have to see, but um, it's a Sunrace, it's not a Shimano. Um, they did have the guard on it. It comes standard with the guard right here. The pedals, like any other pedal, they're metal. They got the little grip on it for your shoes to catch on. These cranks are nice and beefy. You can stand up on the bike while you're going down the road. You can stand up on these pedals with these cranks because they are, they're a good quarter inch to three eighths inch thick and they are solid. I love a double-sided chain guard. I hate a bike that doesn't have the double-sided chain guard. This keeps it from going either way, and I prefer these. This is a lot thicker than I see on most bikes. This is really thick. 
So I understand why they called this a Quiris bike. It's a Latin term for oak. And this thing is solid like an oak. So um, great job on that right there. There you can see your tires again, the industrial sport. You have the reflector on the back, a yellow one. You have a white one on the front, if you're interested in that. This will fit from 5'8 up to 6'5, and I'm 5'10. You can see I got it down pretty good bit there, so I would definitely agree it probably would. It is a step-through model. I like step-throughs. I'm getting too old to step over. If you're wondering, I keep probably about 20 pounds of pressure in each tire. Housed inside here is a 48-watt, 20-amp-hour battery. They claim to uh, give you a range of 60 to 80 miles. We're gonna carry it out and see how far we can get on it. Throttle only, and then we'll see how far we can get on it using uh, pedal assist on it. To take your battery out, you're just gonna put your key in here. You're gonna turn it, unlock it. Got a little knob right here. You'll pull it, the battery will drop right out. Super easy to get out. You can turn your wheel a little bit and it, it comes out. A lot of them are real close, this one's not. Super easy to get out. Always remember to uh, lock it once you're done. You'll notice it has a plug right here. This right now is not in use. What this is gonna be for, they have an inverter coming out. You've probably seen it on some mock wheel bikes and stuff that the inverter will plug in right here. But anyway, you'll be able to charge some accessories you have. Uh, I think it's gonna be like a thousand watt inverter. So uh, laptops, lights, stuff like that, you'll be able to do. Also, you'll be able to hook solar panel to the inverter and charge your battery up on your bike if you're out off grid somewhere for a few days and need some charge. One thing I will tell you, this little cap, I uh, wish they would do like a little snap on for it because this doesn't stay in. It constantly keeps falling out. It doesn't really grip good. And you can see I can't even keep it up there. You know, you can, it just falls open all the time. So I wish they had like a snap on cap for that. Maybe they'll upgrade that. Right here, you'll notice where you can attach something. You can actually order a bracket that mounts right here and you can run an extra battery on this or you can order it with the second battery on it and this little you'll just take this plug out go through hook up to your controller and that's how you will actually run the extra battery with it you can order it with the battery already on it if you want um, i didn't uh, i would rather just carry me another battery than to have this space filled up so if if i want more range i'll just buy me an extra battery but uh, we're going to see what we can get out of this later. This is said to be a torque sensor. We're going to carry it out and see how it does. Um, just from going up in town, around, it's a little jerky at first, but um, it takes some getting used to. For me, I've been riding a different bike. So all of them are different. All of them ride different. Uh, we're going to play with this one and work with the voltage on it and everything because this is set to just fly out of the box. So we're going to work on that. The front suspension has 80 millimeters of travel on it. It is a fork style front suspension to it. One side right here, you got your lockout. The other side here, you can adjust your setting, how much cushion you want, how much spring back you want, how fast you want it to come back once you hit a pothole or something. The most of the time, what I usually do is I tighten this all the way down. I come back six turns and that's usually the best spot for me. There's your other 180 millimeter rotor. There's your other hydraulic fast ace brake. Up here, you have your fast ace hydraulic levers. Other fast ace hydraulic le lever. You have faux leather locking grips, the wide kind. You have your thumb throttle on your left side. And there is your Shimano 8-speed trigger shifter. You do have an integrated brake light that comes on when you hit the brake. You also have blinkers. And it actually is one of the brighter brake lights I've seen on e-bikes. This is really bright at nighttime. Your front headlight will come on by pressing the plus button on your controller and holding it down for two seconds. It's a nice looking, big motorcycle looking type headlight. Fairly bright. It's probably about as bright as most all the other ones. Um, I do find that these, even though it's good looking, these brackets do get in the way. It gives out kind of, it seems like this is the only part that shines. So if you can see, it's not dark, but you can see there's without it with it you can see it's like a straight line it's not super bright it's bright enough to see what's in front of you though so your controller comes on by pressing your power button which is on top holding it down for a couple of seconds it will start off in the mode you left it in on so it was on sport then you hold down this bottom button for a couple of seconds and you see it went to eco mode hold it down a couple of seconds it goes to normal mode hit it and hold it again it goes down to sport mode each mode, eco, normal, or sport, all have five assists. And you can change all of these settings. 
On this, you'll see you have your percentage of battery left. This will tell you how many watts your battery's putting out while the motor's in use, your miles per hour, your trip, your pedal assist. It starts off in trip, but if you hit the bottom button, I button on your controller one time, that's uh, the odometer, four miles. That's the odometer. The max speed I've been 30.8. The average speed was 2.8. The time on it, 28 minutes. And the last trip I did was 1.3 miles. That'll reset every time you turn it on and off the bike and start again. And to get into the advanced setting, this plus button, minus button, you're going to push them both down and hold them at the same time. And in here, I'm going to do actually do a video on this display because it's quite a bit to it. In here, you can change your wheel size, miles per hour, the brightness of the screen, the mode it starts up in, the voltage that each uh, pedal assist puts out. You can do a factory reset. Dormancy, that's just telling you how long you want the bike to set before it goes off if nothing's being used on it. The unit's mile per hour to kilometer. You can set it up with a password so nobody can get into it unless they have the password. Your advanced settings, and that's where um, your advanced setting, you know, your speed sensor, um, assisted number, of power set, slow, you know, how fast you want to start, take off. Uh, it comes set at three seconds, so it slowly picks up to three seconds. Um, kinetic energy, it has it on here, it says it's on, but I haven't noticed it. So connect, kinetic energy is where it puts power back in when you hit the brakes, it tries to charge the battery up a little bit. I haven't seen it actually kick on. A lot of times the, the display will turn red, letting you know it's on, so I haven't seen that. And you just scroll down to back and go back. But I'm gonna do one on this because this is pretty, a lot to it. And so the manual doesn't go through any of these settings, really, especially when you get into the advanced, trying to figure out what that speed uh, sensor is and stuff like that. So I'm, uh, I'm gonna do a lot of work on this. The cable management on this is not bad at all. I've seen a whole lot worse. Right here is for a front basket to hook up. You can do it with this, even though you see all this right here, it still will work. You do have the BMX style handlebars. They do feel like a chopper kind of when you're riding down the road. It is very comfortable. They're not up too high. They may look like they're high risers, but they're actually not. They feel really good. The bike rides really good. You know it's got front suspension. It doesn't have any rear suspension. This cruiser is a cargo bike. It holds 450 pounds. And I can definitely tell you after looking at it and looking at it, being in person with it, it does. It will hold 450 pounds. That back rack on the internet when I was looking at it, I thought, man, that's a huge back rack, but it's actually not. It's, um, it's not too big. It is a little longer than most, but you got a lot of room there. And if you would pull a little trailer behind this, you could haul all kind of stuff. Um, this would be also be good for hunting. Um, it's a powerful bike. I mean, 32 something miles an hour right out of the box. It's a powerful bike. And I'm gonna show you, you'll be able to see that on the next video I put out when we're going up hills and racing down the road, going up some trails and stuff like that. You're gonna be able to see that. So you definitely wanna check that video out and um, watch it because if you're interested in this bike, and if you're not, I got to review up on the Ventons and stuff like that you might want to check out. But that's the specs on this. Let me know if you have any questions or if you're thinking about this bike or anything like that. I don't have any links or anything like that uh, to buy from. Um, I'm going to work on getting those up. But um, this is uh, right now is on sale for $18.99. You can get it from Ratten. It is a solid built bike. Well put together. The welds are great on it. Let me get up close for you here. You can see those welds, they did a really good job on those welds. I mean, just really good job. I mean, there's no bad spots. I hadn't found one bad weld on it, on that bike altogether. And I've gone over it really good looking. I'm really peculiar about that kind of stuff. Stay tuned, uh, please subscribe. If you don't subscribe, you're not gonna know when this video comes out on this bike right here if you wanna watch it. So subscribe and get notifications. That way you'll be notified when this comes out. And hopefully it'll be out tomorrow, maybe the next day, but Subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. It costs absolutely nothing to click subscribe. I subscribe to everybody I watch. If I watch any of their videos, I subscribe. So thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day and see you in the next video.